The following has been rendered by a single Pico 8 file without any editing whatsoever. This is the normal Pico 8 palette. This is the alternate Pico 8 palette. And these are both at the same time. Hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. The temperature has changed. <laughs> I'm cozying up here a little bit because apparently in China, at least where I live, people don't understand the concept of heating. Anyway, welcome to this new episode of, um, well, of a new tutorial on Lazy Devs Academy about Pico 8, about a new feature of Pico 8 that I really want to discuss. Uh, it's a feature that has been kind of discovered by Bonevolt and kind of like also featured a little bit by um, Stinker as well, like explored a little bit by Stinker. And the Stinker approached me and I said like, okay, you have to do a video about this because Bonevolt actually made a beautiful uh, thread in the Luxelofl forum about this. And I don't feel like this feature has been discussed a lot. It is a mind blowing feature that will allow us to have more than 16 colors on the screen at any given time. Now this video will be a little bit of a follow up to two videos I made in the past. For one, I think it's going to be difficult to understand what this video is about unless you have watched the alternate color palette, the secret color palette video that is going to be coming up here. So I suggest you check out that video first. And the other video that's kind of like a prequel to this one uh, is the video about memory. I think it's going to be also kind of difficult to follow what we're about to do without understanding how Pico 8's memory works and how binary numbers work, how hexadecimal numbers work and so forth. So yeah, check out those two videos before and I'm going to post also links in doobly-doo so you can watch those before and then you can understand maybe, hopefully, how this works if I do my job correctly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get into this idea, well, the, the technology or the, the feature we're trying to address today is the secondary display palette. So let us, before we jump into the details, let us first lay out some groundwork, try to get, you know, on, uh, on the same page uh, when it comes to terminology and, you know, what's, how to name things. So let us discuss palettes. Okay, I have here four bananas on the screen, four bananas. This is how we draw them on the screen, very simple um, program. And I'm gonna use this simple program to demonstrate some concepts about Pico 8, which you should be already familiar with, uh, but I'm just gonna you know, go through them again a little bit real quick and actually put some terms to this concept that we're discussing here. So you are obviously familiar with the PAL statement. A PAL statement takes something like one argument that is gonna be like a, a color, then another color, and um, yeah, that's it for now. Okay, so we basically say like a change on this color with this color, right? And in this, this case, we're gonna change the yellow with the brown. And so if you run this now, all of our bananas will turn brown. But of course we can put this pal statement somewhere else for uh, in between the banana draws, for example here. And now only the last banana will turn brown. That's because what we're manipulating here is the so-called draw palette. The draw palette is that that first term that we want to want to remember. Draw palette. Uh, spelling doesn't matter here, right? <laughs> so the draw palette is kind of like the default palette that we're manipulating. You can access the draw palette also by um, putting a comma zero, like the third argument in a pal, um, putting a zero there to specify that we are actually talking about the draw palette. But it, if you don't specify a third argument, it will default to um, the zero as well. So it's like the default palette is a draw palette. And that palette basically changes all of the draw statements that are coming up after you change the palette. So whatever you draw on the screen before doesn't matter. After you do the manipulation, everything you draw afterward, that will get drawn differently, specified by your uh, draw palette manipulation, right? So the banana, only the fourth banana will turn brown, right? Okay, this is the first palette that Pico 8 has. There's a second palette as well, which you already might be also familiar with, which is like the third argument in a palette statement when you turn that to a one, that is gonna be a uh, display palette. We call, call that the display palette. And I think this terminology is kind of new in one of the recent Pico 8 updates. It has been kind of like set in stone that this is what we're talking about. I'm not sure, but I think so. So with a display palette, you see like we changed the dis display palette before we draw the third, uh, the fourth banana, but alas, all of the bana bananas have changed. That's because 
the display palette is always applied to all of the content of the screen. That is at the time where you run the, the display palette statement and everything that comes afterwards as well. Like it just changes generally all of the pixels on uh, that you see here. Um, so it's kind of like a different behavior. Um, the first palette is good for uh, like the display, uh, the draw palette is good for like, you know, your typical uh, palette swaps, you know, where you have one enemy that changes maybe color, uh, but you don't want all of the enemies change color, just this one enemy. And this the screen, uh, this display palette here that we have here, that's good for effects that were applied on an entire screen. Something like fading was really great. Okay, so these are like two different behaviors, two different palettes, and we might, we should maybe also quickly discuss how those two palettes are actually, what are they actually doing in the background. Okay, so this is Memsplore. You're already familiar with this. And you remember if you watched this um, other video when I um, discussed or uh, explained how memory works in Pico 8, I already explained this. Everything in that you see on the screen is actually inside Pico 8's memory. There is a kind of like a, a chunk of memory that saves all of the colors of the different pixels that you see on the screen at every, any given time. So if I go, oops, clicked wrong. If I go here into the screen data, uh, and change it to this. Uh, let's see. You can see here uh, there's a preview of the different pixel colors. You can see that the numbers that I actually see on the screen on in this aspects program that they are actually appearing here in the actual memory. And I can start if I start manipulating them, I would see pixel changes, but it's redrawing every frame, so I cannot actually manipulate this. If I do something here, it will, it will just uh, turn back to whatever it was before. But anyway, um, when you're drawing to the screen, you are actually manipulating, usually manipulating the pixels here. And this is the difference between the draw palette and the display palette. With a draw palette, you are actually changing the numbers that the next draw statement will put into the memory. You're actually changing the numbers. So when you say instead of the 10, uh, color 10, which is yellow, uh, draw color 4, which is brown, you're actually starting to write the number 4 instead of the 10 when you draw the next banana. That's the draw palette. The display palette doesn't actually touch the colors, the, the numbers in the memory. The numbers stay the same. The banana is actually still a 10 color banana, a, a yellow banana underneath. Instead, what you're changing is how the fictional Pico 8 hardware interprets those colors. There's somewhere here a hardware that says, ah, number 10, that means yellow, right? And you're changing that. And, when it, and so, so it thinks like, ah, number 10, that means brown. Uh, so you're changing this association between, association between color, uh, number and color. So that's the display palette. That kind of works differently. And this also explains why it's only possible to have the uh, secret the new secret colors only with a display palette and not with a draw palette because there's not actually enough room to for us to write a number that's bigger than 16 into the memory there's not enough memory to write more than 16 colors uh, in uh, on the screen um, but so the only way for us to get more than 16 colors is, is to actually manipulate something else and that is going to be the display palette to manipulate how the colors are interpreted um, by the Pico 8 hardware okay so Big news, big reveal, big discovery by Bonevolt is that there is actually a third palette. There is the draw palette, there is the display palette, and there is a secondary display palette. Primary and secondary display. There's two display palettes. Of those two palettes that we're talking about, the palettes that are manip manipulating how the numbers are interpreted, well, there's two different palettes for Pico 8. <gasps> Let me show you where they are. All right, so the number that you are interested in is uh, the address 5F5F. This is the magical number. Wait, let me switch to this. This is the magical a, a number that usually is zero, but this is, you can see a, a secondary palette effect. This says what Pico is supposed to do with the secondary palette. Usually set to zero, so it does nothing, um, but kind of like a, a, the default setting here, the, the one that we're interested in is 16. Well, is no, not 160, 0, 016. And you see nothing changes. Something flickered there. <laughs> nothing changes otherwise, right? It's just like, okay, whatever. And by the way, in hexadecimal, it's 10. Because 16 in hexadecimal is 10. Whatever. Um, now, there directly afterwards, in the addresses afterwards, you actually have the secondary palette. Now, Pico 8 starts with the secondary palette being just empty, just being all black. So I'm going to 
uh, invest now some time to actually write the alternate, the new secret colors into the secondary palette. So we have like primary and secondary. And so the primary um, screen palette has the normal colors and the secondary screen palette has the secret colors, right? So we just like here, the next 60 numbers are basically the numbers for the colors of the secondary palette. So I'm just gonna go 128, 129. All right, so here we are. We've now written, we have now have two palettes basically loaded up. We have the standard color palette and the primary display palette, or the, the default Pico 8 colors in the prim primary display palette, and the new secret Pico 8 colors in the secondary display palette. But we don't see anything yet. We turn the effect on, we set the palette, but we still don't see anything. Well, now we come into how to use the secondary palette. See, directly after the palette here in these numbers, starting with uh, address 5F70, you get something that here, down here, called the secondary palette bit field. Uh, I think sometimes this is also called a bit mask. But basically what we see here is a lot of zeros. And each zero represents one line of pixels on the screen. If that, uh, if that bit, if that zero is a zero, then it will be, this line of pixels will be rendered in the primary color palette. And if you change that bit to one, that line of pixels will be rendered in the secondary color palette, uh, secondary screen palette, display palette. Okay, so now if I start putting ones into this, into these areas, into those 16 addresses here, you will see that some lines will turn into alternate color lines. So you can see I can manipulate how parts of the screen are being rendered, which, which colors are used to render individual lines of the screen. So for example, you can see here, up here, I have like the UI element. I can, for example, set um, this the the first address here to all ones. So the, the top bar of my UI will be rendered with a different color palette. <gasps> Exciting. This is, the, this is it, this is the first big effect. There's some other things we can do. I'm gonna introduce to you later, but this is basically the basics here. This is how you do it in Memsplore. We're gonna walk you through the process of doing this in, in code in a second here. Okay, so this is a screenshot from a game, Get Out of This Dungeon, which is an excellent game. I recommend you, it's a really beautiful jump and run. Um, as far as I can tell, it doesn't have any water. So let's say, for the sake of argument, that I wanted to add some water to this game. How would I do that? Well, I have already prepared something here. Look, we can use the secondary palette, secondary display palette, to render the lower half or lower portion of the screen in, in a different palette to make it as appear as if it's underwater. And you can actually animate this because you can you know, change which, which lines, which portions of the screen are rendered with a different palette uh, to make it seem like the water is maybe rising or, or falling and so forth. Let's just look how that's made. Okay. So I will actually share all of the, my examples down there in doobly-doo so you can download them yourself and check them out yourself. Um, basically, I, this is not actually the game. I just like made a huge screenshot of the game and I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it on the, on the screen. It's just an example. Here, um, okay, so in the first line, we're defining the underwater color palette, the, the green color palette. You know what you see when, when the water is, is rising, right? This green palette is something I defined here. That's gonna be putting this in this array. We dump this array into a comma two palette, right? So we were talking about how there's like, you know, the 10 for nothing. That's will the, uh, replace, that is uh, draw palette manipulation. You could also say 10 for zero, right? That uh, was the, the banana example, you know, where the bananas, one of the bananas turned brown. That is manipulating the primary display palette. Now, if, you, um, if the third parameter is a one, we are manipulating the primary display palette. So now all the bananas will turn brown. And if, if the last parameter is a two, we are actually manipulating the secondary display palette. So we don't have to actually have to, you know, poke in the values as I did in Memsplore uh, into the, the right address. It's actually something that is secretly supported by PQ8 already internally using this pulse statement. So if you set the last argument to a two, you will start manipulating the secret new secondary uh, display palette. And in this case, I'm dumping, this is also a new feature from one of the recent um, Pico 8 versions. You can just dump an entire array into this pulse statement 
Uh, and in this, this case, I'm dumping this array into the secondary display palette because there's a two here. I'm tweaking something here with the primary display palette here. Um, I'm changing color 14 to 139. That's because there's this wavy line for the surface. It doesn't matter. It's not, not important for what you're doing here. Um, then I turned on the secondary display palette. This you have to do some poking here. So um, as I said, this 5f, 5f address, we put a, a, a hexadecimal 10. So that's a 16 here to activate the effect. And then here I'm activated the mouse, doesn't really matter, just like to, so I can control the wave with the mouse. And then here in a draw statement, I clear the screen, I draw the, the entire game, and this is just to draw the little wavy line, whatever. Uh, in the update function, I'm actually setting the water level. So I have this little function here, and that's actually a useful function for you to use if you want to start experimenting with this. Uh, I have this uh, function called set water level. I set it to the position of the mouse plus two, so it appears a little below the mouse cursor. And this is not a very efficient function. Uh, I'm basically creating uh, strings uh, of zeros and ones and then converting them to a number, just using a two num to convert a string to a number. Um, but yeah, it's basically, it's, it takes a position, a y position of the mouse or a y value and basically says everything below that value, uh, y value rendered everything below that in a different palette. Easy piece of a breezy. And just to give you another example, what you can do with this alternate color palette, because you know you can do other things as well. So this is Jalpy, and uh, we're gonna try to use an interesting effect here. So uh, again, I loaded the alternate color palette in the secondary display palette, and then I'm turning on the effect here, and then I'm filling the entire bit mask with just like you know one zero one zero one zero. So alternate every line with primary, secondary, primary, secondary, primary, secondary. And what you do with that is you get kind of like a, a scan line effect, right? It's a bit maybe too extreme if you just use this, L, um, you know, the secret colors, alternate with the secret normal colors. But if you tweak the colors just right, you might get like a nice little CRT monitor effect built into Pico 8, basically. That's one thing you can do with, um, with this effect. And so here's another example of what you can do with the secondary color palette. Um, this time I'm doing something uh, a bit a bit um, more subtle maybe so in this case um, I'm I picked out the blue color as a kind of like a highlight color on some of my metallic elements in this in this kind of mock-up in this kind of schmap mock mock-up and I'm um, I'm animating this highlight that goes up and down the screen and a cool thing about this is that um, it will synchronize all of the highlights for all, all of the objects on the screen right so what we're doing here again um, or at the beginning, I mean, just copy the primary uh, color palette in the secondary color palette, just so I have the same colors in the primary as in the secondary. And then for the secondary color palette, I set the 12, that is uh, the blue, the light blue. I set it to white, so now the secondary is like all white for the blue color. The blue color is, turns to white, basically. <laughs> uh, I turn on the effect. Uh, and then again, I'm drawing the, just like this is a screenshot, so I'm drawing just a screenshot on the on the. Mm, uh, the entire sprite onto the screen. Uh, and then I use this function called here specular. And that you use a similar, you know, very inefficient screen <laughs> string manipulation to basically um, pick up a few lines on the screen and and uh, render those in, in the secondary color palette. And that's those lines are moving down for every frame, right? So you get like this, um, a couple of lines here are rendered in a in the alternate color secondary color palette and so the for a couple of lines the blue will turn into a white now we have to say this is not something that wasn't be, uh, possible before so this is um uh cactus parent cactus is, um ufo swamp odyssey and you can see it has a similar effect that we're talking about the um, the water effect, right? Where if you jump in the water, and, and basically the game is rendered in a different color palette. And I initially thought that Pariah Cactus was actually already using this new, newly discovered um, uh, secondary palette here, but actually he's not. I was actually going through his code to see how he 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 done it, and he actually just uses renders this the basically renders the entire game twice with a different color palette, and then does a clipping window or something like this. So you actually don't necessarily need it for those effects. 
um, but using the secondary color palette would make this effect a lot easier and cheaper on the on the tokens to implement. So it's not always something that's completely necessary, but it gives you like just another tool and toolbox to achieve effects that would be otherwise more difficult to achieve. And also I wanted to also point out something about this screen, which is again the same effect, but using now the secondary color palette, secondary display palette. Um, you notice how the UI at the bottom that changes color too. So you see, even if you use this, you kind of have to think uh, with this in mind already when you design your entire game, when you do a layout, when you come up with the colors that you're going to use in your game, you kind of have to think with this effect in mind for this effect to work. You cannot just like slap it on to already an existing game. So in this case, you know, uh, okay, maybe I don't want my UI to change colors. So maybe I have to put the UI on the top of the screen or maybe I have to use special colors for the UI that don't appear anywhere in the game. You have to kind of like come up with some kind of solution here for, um, because you cannot actually, or maybe like you single out this uh, the, the, the lines at the bottom that where the UI is and that, those will be rendered in the primary screen palette. You have to like, you know, again, there's some thinking involved. Um, Zep from Lexlofl won't just give you those extra 16 colors for free. You have to work for them a little bit. And I like that about the way this is implemented. Now, if you are one of the eagle-eyed observers and you saw the intro that I showed you previously, previously, you notice that something there's something odd about this, right? All right, so this is how we started the video, and you notice that there's something odd here. So, first of all, it's not 32 colors; it's 31 colors because I didn't replace the black with the alternate black. It's just you know, so you don't see the effect. But also, uh, I said that um, you know you always apply uh, the secondary palette to. Um, different lines to different lines on the screen, pixel lines. But in this case, we have, you know, colors from secondary and primary palette all in the second line and uh, in the same line. How is that possible, right? What did I do here? Or, or <laughs> more specifically, what did Bonevolt do here? Because that's something he came up with as well. And this is genius. Okay, so you might have noticed when I press escape, something weird happens. This is the secret. So uh, if you're watching the if you're watching the um, uh, memory video, uh, I introduced you to you a special address called 5F2C, which you're not supposed to remember. <laughs> Just write it down somewhere. Or always go back to this video or something to look it up because I cannot remember this myself. Anyway, there's a special address that you can write stuff into, and it will manipulate like the entire screen somehow in a weird way. It will zoom in sometimes, like as, um, it will turn the resolution to 64 times 64, or it will rotate, or it will flip, or it will flip part of the screen, mirror the screen somehow. You know, there's different effects that you can go through here. And one of the effects is just rotate the screen 90 degrees, but this effect is applied after the secondary coral palette. So with this little trick, you can change the secondary palette uh, effect into not uh, affecting individual lines, but individual columns. So that's what we did here. Basically, if you remove this, And if we bring back the black or you, you see that this is what we're actually rendering. We're rendering the top uh, half of the screen in the normal color palette and the bottom half of the screen in the secret colors, right? And then we turn it around 90 degrees. So it looks uh, like we have manipulated, we applied the secondary color palette to columns of lines, uh, to colors of uh, columns of pixels, not lines of pixels. So this is how you can get around this limitation that is always applied to, to lines. You can turn this into columns as well. And I think a Bone Vault's recent game, um, not just Bone Vault, but also Benjamin Soul, uh, they made a beautiful game called Moon Race. And I think Bone Vault, <laughs> in the character selection screen, Bone Vault uh, used like these beautiful little icons uh, or like um, portraits of the different characters you can pick from and each of the characters each of the portraits is rendered in its own color palette and so he's actually switching the alternate color palette to have more colors on the screen at any given time and i think he's using some kind of trick like this there as well really good really beautiful you can use a lot of little cool tricks with this but this is not all. There is one more trick. There is even one more trick in the box. This is not the only way you can use the secondary color palette. And in fact, the secondary display palette and the terminologies, <laughs> I had to get used to it. Um, 
In fact, there might be more ways of using the secondary display palette that we haven't discovered yet, or maybe will be get implemented later. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so this is uh, again the gel P image that we are talking about, and we have set like this um, this scanline display pattern here, right? And in fact, let us turn off the scanline display pattern. We'll just, let's just make it um, zero, 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 zero. Just like just make it so like this, okay? This line here, this poke five f five f, we said uh, we uh, we put sixteen in here, or like uh, hexadecimal ten to activate, to select an effect that you want to be using with the, with the secondary display palette. Well, there's more than just one effect. There's more effects that can you apply here. Uh, so far, we know basically of two. The, the default one, but there's also this this here. If you put a 30 in here, a hexadecimal 30, and you have to add something, uh, we're going to add the 12 for the color 12. We're adding the 12 because we want to apply this to the color 12 and we run this. There's suddenly a rainbow effect, a, a, a gradient rainbow effect happening. Why? What is happening here? What are these colors? Where do, <laughs> do the colors, where do the colors come from? Uh, you can actually apply to different colors as well. <gasps> now it's we apply to a different color. What's happening here? Well, what you see here in the background is we replaced the blue on the screen we replace that with um, with the secondary color palette, basically. These are like um, every eight pixels, it switches to the next color uh, going you know, from top to bottom. So this is actually the secondary, the, the secret colors that we put into the secondary color palette. They are being rendered as a rainbow, basically, onto every pixel that has the color 12. All right, so we basically replace the sky with a rainbow defined by the secondary display palette. So if we could put like different numbers into the secondary display palette, we can have a different kind of um, different kind of uh, sky effect, different kind of a gradient in the back. So for example, I have something prepared here. Let us, so I just copy and paste something. So this is for example, an evening sky. Right, so now we have like these evening sky colors, right? Or we can have like this here. If you just pick the right colors for the secondary display palette, we can just basically modify, manipulate uh, what kind of gradient we have in the background happening here. So we can elect more. You can um, you can um, uh, specify what what colors are being displayed in the sky here in our our case. Okay, so but then you might be asking yourself what what does the bit mask do in this case? Because we are now applying it not to individual lines anymore, we are applying it to all of the pixels that have a certain color. Well, let's bring out the break the scan line. Uh, okay, so wait, so let, let me remove this so maybe it's more, more clear. Ah, see? So what the bit mask does now is Whenever the bitmask is for a given line is set to zero, it will just render the gradient as normal. But if it's the bitmask is set for a given line is set to one, that line will be rendered in the next color that is next coming up next. Uh, so you can make a bit of a like a dithering pattern here to kind of like blend the different colors from from the gradient in the background, blend them into each other. So if you apply this on the blue sky here, you can see that um, actually the way this pattern is set up is that each color is repeated twice. So you get like these, uh, you know, a band of uh, pure color, then a band of, ma of alternating colors, and a band of pure color, band of alternating colors. The bottom line is that the bed mask is kind of like allowing you to uh, fast forward to the next color for a line. And that is not necessarily like an intuitive effect. You kind of have to experiment with this a little bit. So I will post this example here downstairs as well. So you can try it out a little bit, maybe apply it to different uh, different colors so to understand it a little bit better. It's it's pretty mind blowing and I'm not sure what to do with this. I actually asked Bone Vault, you know, if there's a maybe better application than just like, okay, you can do some sick gradients in, in the backgrounds <laughs> additionally to, uh, to whatever is on the screen. I, that's that's nice, but it's like okay, this there's something else we can do. And Bone Vault actually has an amazing suggestion. 
All right, so this is what he came up with. So this is basically kind of like a gel pee, um, like a super gel pee, basically. <laughs> so he recreated gel pee with like a lot of beautiful uh, pixel art. And then he's using the gradient function to give the different objects in the screen an additional color that is not otherwise in the palette. So in our case here, for example, the grass underneath here, Mm, that is receiving, you know, the orange color. You can see on the side here, he is displaying the gradient that, that he loaded up here. So you can see that he put some uh, orange, um, so he can put some orange in the flowers on the on the ground. And then for the water, you know, he has an extra blue there. And for um, for the tree to get like the more shades of green, he gets in, like an additional green color. And then for the sun, he gets like the the pale yellow color as well. As well, and for the coins, you get like the the p, um, plum color. I guess that's a plum color. <laughs> so each element of the screen kind of corresponds to a certain position on the screen, and he set up his gradient in a way that he can always grab the color from the gradient and and get an additional color. He's not using fully thirty two colors. I think it's uh, twenty two colors at this point. But you can kind of tell that this is kind of like looks more colorful than you were expecting a, P a Pico 8 game to be. And that's kind of like pretty amazing, I think. But of course, this is not, not just like the initial colors, this is also because Bonevolt is an amazing pixel artist. And this is the moment where I actually want to also plug in his channel on his channel. He just recently started doing some YouTube videos and he's doing amazing YouTube videos, uh, kind of teaching his, his art, pixel art. Uh, skills uh, to people and so if you want to like spice up your pixel art definitely something to check out uh, as well so yeah this is like another use or like a more advanced use like a very specific use of of, um, of the gradient again this is you have to design your entire game with this effect in mind if you want to take advantage of it like this obviously so for example in this case you cannot just like set platforms anywhere you want, right? Because you have to like also take into consideration where your gradient is and so forth. You cannot just move the sun around. You cannot just put the coins anywhere you want because suddenly you always have to think about, okay, where's my gradient? Maybe you have to like change the gradient on the fly as coins appear in different position on uh, during the level. So obviously this is a bit of a advanced situation here, but I'm sure if you're like an experienced Pico 8, user, you um, might find a really cool way of, of using this, this gradient function. And this is actually my challenge for you guys, like post in the comment section downstairs how you would use, especially the gradient function, what do you th reckon uh, the gradient function, function could be used for, or just a regular function where it's just like rendering the different lines or columns in the with different palettes. Send me your ideas, maybe we can uh, collect some, some, some cool ideas for people to try out in the future. All right, so here we are. This is the secondary display palette. It's an amazing new function and not really well documented. I haven't seen a lot of people use it except from Bone Vault. So, um, so yeah, let's get onto it. I think this is something worth exploring. Um, um, also, it would be interesting to see if maybe there's some more effects hiding in that 5F, 5F address. Maybe if you set it to some different values, maybe some different effects appear. It's worth exploring. Maybe there's some more treasures, uh, Easter eggs, I guess, uh, hidden by uh, Zip for us to find out and explore. This is definitely a really cool um, tool in our toolbox as Pico 8 users to make their games even more juicier and more beautiful. Thank you, Bone Vault, for documenting this so so de uh, such, in such detail. And thank you for Stinker for bringing up to my attention and also doing those beautiful examples in the comment section um, of the of the post of the post on Lexilophil. I will post the link to that as well in the in the doobly doo downstairs. This is it for today. Um, yeah. See you next time, guys. Bye bye.